G'day everyone, welcome back to the channel. For the back of our last episode on our best Holden engines, today we look at Holden Lemons. Okay, so what makes a lemon a lemon? Well, there's a few different things. Most of, most of these cars I'm going to share with you today are seriously underpowered. They've got reliability issues that have been well documented, uh, not just by me, but by motor, motorsport journalists and uh, RACV and other credible authorities. But I'll tell you what, some of these, you know, there are more lemons in this list down at the local Woolworths fruit and veg aisle, but that's all good. Anyway, we'll start off with number five. Let's get there. Coming in at number five, probably one of the world's most ugliest cars, and that's the Holden Combo. This funny looking thing, it was like a halfway between a courier truck, a panel van, and I didn't know what it wanted to be. And uh, it didn't last very long in the market, that's for sure, and only lasted for a few years. Powered by originally a 1.4 litre uh, single cam uh, little engine there. Meek power output for this poor little thing. Can you imagine driving this around the streets of you know, Sydney or Melbourne and dropping off your letters and stuff. No good. Anyways, that made the list. I saw a bloke with one of these. It was done up as a sort of like a handyman's car. He picked it up for a hundred bucks. So we'll have a look at car sales at the back of this episode for the cheapest and uh, best looking examples we can find for each of these five cars. Coming in at number four, Holden should have really stuck to its knitting with motorsport and uh, family oriented performance cars. I don't know why they ventured into four wheel drives. This Jackaroo, I tell you what, when you're up against Toyota Hiluxes and Land Cruisers and Nissan patrols, it, we're never going to win. So this venture into these Jackaroos, they were under-engineered, underpowered, and just overwhelmed by the, um, the large Japanese manufacturers when it comes to four-wheel drive pedigree. You may find many Jackaroos broken down on the side of four-wheel drive trucks. Um, many of them, their engines pack in. I'm um, probably going to get a bit of hate mail for people with a Jackaroo that's got five, six hundred thousand kilometers on them, but that's okay. Um, but yeah, from our experience and what we've seen out there, they are notoriously unreliable. And in comparison to their Japanese brethren in the four-wheel drive community, they're a third choice. The one redeeming factor for the little Jackaroo was that in 1993, there or thereabouts, HSV provided a cosmetic upgrade to the Jackaroo. And although the 130 kilowatt engine wasn't touched too much, they had some aesthetic sort of add-ons and stuff which made it look a little bit more special. Coming in at number three, it's a tie. And it's a tie because we've got the VC four-cylinder powered Commodore with the Starfire. The Starfire! And it wasn't good enough to put in one car, I had to put another one into the UC Sunbird as well. I'll tell you what, a mate of mine um, at college had one of these UC um, Sunbirds and it was, it was rubbish. It really was. So these have got a very paltry four-cylinder in them. Many people say Holden got the 202, knocked the last two cylinders off the bank and created a four-cylinder. I don't know about that. It was mediocrity from day dot, these things. They were woeful. But the poor little Starfire had odds stacked against us from the day dot in, in terms of capacity, little 1900, you know, 72 horsepower were there or thereabouts. And it was a slow revving, low compression thing. It didn't have a chance, the poor little thing. And it was towing around vehicle weights and cars that were really designed to have a much bigger capacity engine. Particularly when Commodores actually had the option, you know, for a six cylinder and an eight cylinder. So why they went with a four cylinder, I'll never know. Speaking of decrepit four cylinders in big cars, it wasn't that big a car really, but I'll tell you what, this motor was absolutely undesirable. My dad had one of these, the JB Chimera. Holy dooly. I remember Frankie and I were driving along once and there was an NRMA park next to a lady with a Camara broken down. Frankie yelled out the window, it's the computer. An hour later, when we come back from picking up our tofu driving past, Frankie goes, was it the computer? As she nodded. So these things were just terrible. Like the one my dad had, the, the head gasket went, overheating issues, rust issues, underpowered. This 1.6 litre, the way you had to drive this thing, it was like you had to you know, wring the, the neck on a cat. It was just seriously 
woeful. You know, and I know I've used that word a couple of times in this video, but these Chimeras particularly were. And when my dad went to trade it in, he um, upgraded to the Pintaro, like another high powered um, car. Oh, he had a fascination with the four cylinders. And um, yeah, this thing was e equally weak, but at least mechanically, the thing held together, unlike the Chimera. So the poor little Chimera engine, as I mentioned, 1.6 litre, barely over 60 kilowatts, these things used to, you know, and no torque. So you really had to rev them to get any sort of ability to change gears. And they were, they were horrendous. Speaking of horrendous, Holden left the, the worst to last. And where everyone was thinking for a swan song for the Commodore badge, we come out with this insignia inspired debacle of the ZB. And I'll tell you what, Peter Brock and others would be turning in their grave on this thing. You know, we went from a rear wheel drive chassis platform to front wheel drive. Who does that? We went from an option, we went back to four cylinder options in Commodores, a sacrilege. And then we didn't even have the V8 option. So the V6 that had come out with, it's okay. It's like mid 200 kilowatts, but you know, what a way to say goodbye to the Commodore brand. And we had a tune a dyno day at our tune shop at Gentech and they parked one there. No one even went up and looked at it. It was just disgust in terms of this thing but you know whilst that chassis um sort of shape and everything is reflected in the v8 supercars the look of them are okay but this car goes down as having the lowest resale value as a proportion of the new sa new car sales price in australia and that's mainly because mechanically the thing's okay you know for a daily driver if you're that way inclined but it's just the general public's attitude and the swan song and what we've been left with is the final Commodore ever. People are just disgusted. So, you know, it's, um, I'll leave some sort of links in the description below on where we're getting all this data from, but to have the lowest resale percentage, that sort of says something about this Commodore. And for me, I was, I was pretty devastated too. And the, so the last real Commodore from my perspective is the VF Series 2, um, because that came out with the LS3, and that was the last Commodore that I'll call a Commodore in Australia. All right, so you've heard about the top five lemons. Let's jump on a car sales now and see if we can find some best in class examples of these lemons. And um, this should be good fun. Check this out. All right, let's kick things off with a combo here. Look at this stellar example. It's a 2002 XC manual, uh, 314,000 Ks. I just run in really, but have a go at this. It's a good looking thing, isn't it? You know, only a few minor scratch and dents. Now this is interesting when you look at the um, description here though. It's a uh, few dents and chips around the body. Um, no roadworthy rebuilt motor, but have a look what's um, some repairs that have been done. We've got a timing belt, water pump, cam seal, crank seal, rear main seal, rocker cover gasket, valve st stem seals, <laughs> new head gasket, head bolts. I'll tell you what, spent a lot of money on this, um, but needs a mechanically minded owner to carry out more repairs. Gearbox is leaking, so... This poor old um, Holden combo. If you're in the market for one of these things, I don't think you'd find a better example just quietly. It's uh, beautiful. So if you've got 27990 go get yourself a combo. All right, let's turn our attention to some high-quality four-wheel drive action here. So this is the uh, Holden Jackaroo. This one's a 98 model. Um, great combination for four-wheel driving. Uh, the automatic petrol versions, love them. So this has got 231Ks on the clock and $1,600. That's a bargain really and look at this this has been perfectly maintained this particular model it's got um velour seats or a bit of cloth action there um and have a go at this this looks if you're in the market for a jackaroo um now, now these things don't add extra weight in the back at all these these seats that's they're pretty good they look very comfortable as well and there you go that's the jackaroo um 231,000 clicks i think this thing's barely running if i'm honest so if you're after one of these, and if you, you don't want to get stuck on the trials, there you go, six and a hundred bucks. Right, onto the uh, UC Sunbird here, and they're notoriously hard to get a hold of these days because a lot of people are using them for Tirana uh, restos and rebuilds too. But this one's on uh, Gum Tree for twenty two fifty up at Glen Innes, so it's a nice part of the world. But if you have a look, this, this thing is just straight off the showroom, really. It's um, looking very well maintained. I, oh, I can't even see the motor still in there. Here we go. No, no motor. So you get you get a rust-free body that's been garaged all its life, and in the interior's um, impeccable, really. I remember those old Sunbird rear rear tail lights. I remember them. 
And um, yeah, so if you're in the market for a nice, well-maintained body and you want to do a resto, this one could be it. So as I mentioned, she's on Gumtree at the moment, up at Glen Ellis. So a bit of a short drive from Sydney. So if you're interested in that one, go get it. All right, with the ZB Commodores, we mentioned that their resale value is um, is way up there. So here you can get a 2017 MI-18 um, build ZB Commodore, an automatic. God bless it. But this is the four-cylinder two-litre for $19,000. So just goes to show. I mean, I don't know what they retailed new, but I dare say it was probably double that. Um, you know, not a bad body shape. This one looks like it's fairly, fairly well-maintained and low Ks. Well, yeah, he started at 24,990. He's now down to 19. So it goes to show you that there's buyers queuing up at the doors for these things. Um, that's a bit disappointing, really. It's the last sort of Commodore. Let's have a look at the um, the most expensive one there is. Let's have a look. 54,990, but that's the VXR model, and that's only got 30k. So that's a brand new car with a 3.6 liter powerhouse. Um, Front wheel drive, you know, these things are just great, but actually quite nice seats in them. The interior appointments, and look at the size and the height of that console, jeez. But anyway, that's the last Commodore we're ever going to see, but I'm not even going to call it a Commodore, I'm just going to call it an Insignia. That's too heartbreaking. Alright, save the best for last, so this is the Holden Chimera, it's only got 212,000 Ks on, it's a barely run in, you know, It's an, and it's Sydney kilometres too, oh no, it's at St. Leonard's Victoria, sorry, I thought St. Leonard's New South Wales, let's have a look here, the dear old Chimera, oh, they're a gorgeous looking thing, aren't they, they're easy on the eye, these Chimeras, oh jeez, I remember that look, oh god, and yep, oh jeez, couldn't pay me enough, oh look at that, it's a beautiful 1600 motor and the side mount dizzy and yeah i remember that god they're just awful aren't they well you're in the market for camera let's see what else is around because you know their bargains are plenty here well there's a beautifully maintained one here in western australia let's go have a look at him 1500 bucks well the owner's kept the tires up and he's been towing with it too so that's good honestly these people this looks very nice Nice dash mat there. Oh, there's that motor again. Oh, God. Yeah, that's the powerhouse, all right. Yep. So if you're in the market for a little Chimera, go get yourself one. Um, they are beautiful. All right, on that note, we're going to sign off here at Clooney Garage. We don't normally finish upstairs or in the house. We're normally out in the garage. We've got more content coming your way in the next uh, couple of days. Fred Jr.'s been modifying the rally car. We've got more updates on our VF Raceline car, and we've got a bunch of other stuff. Catch you later.